Welcome students to exercise 22, which is going to focus on general sensation. This is the first of our sensory chapters. Um, I personally think the sensory labs are a lot of fun. Um, you guys will get to test all of your different senses and see how kind of how well they work. Um, so they're very active labs. Um, and generally students um, quite enjoy them. Um, but before we get to testing our senses, um, let's just talk about the difference between a general sense and a special sense. So like when you're a little kid, you always get asked, you know, oh, what are your five senses? And we always say touch, uh, you know, seeing, hearing, uh, taste and smell, right? Those are our five senses. Well, really, we actually have a lot more senses than that. Um, and we categorize them based on the complexity um, of the receptor. Um, so the general senses of which touch happens to be one um, are generally simpler receptor types, they tend to be smaller, and they tend to be diffuse, meaning they're kind of spread throughout the body. Very often um, in the skin, but sometimes in our internal organs as well. Um, so the general senses falling under the umbrella of somatosensation are things like touch, pain, temperature, and kind of body stretch. Now, our special senses, some of them we're familiar with, right? Vision, hearing, smell, taste, but then balance. That's the one that you never say when you're a little kid. The special sense organs tend to be larger, they tend to be more complex, and they tend to be more localized. So for instance, in our eyes, we have our receptors for vision. In our ears, we have our receptors for um, hearing and for balance. In our nose, um, we have our receptors for smell. And then on our tongue, we have our receptors for taste. And so since they're more discrete, they're kind of just in a location and they're not spread throughout the body. And since they're a much more complex um, structure, vision, hearing, smell, taste, and balance are classified as special senses. Touch, pain, temperature, and kind of muscle stretch um, are then classified as general senses. Um, one of the ways that we classify our receptors is by the type of stimulus, the source of stimulus to which they are responding. So exteroreceptors are going to respond to external stimuli. All of our special senses, all of our smell and taste and hearing, all of those are exteroreceptors. Interoreceptors are responding to internal stimuli, right? Extero, external, intero, internal. Um, so in all of our visceral organs, we have various receptors that sense stretch, um, sense chemicals, all kinds of stuff what's going on inside our body. So if the source of the stimulus is internal, what picks it up is an interoreceptor. If the source of the stimulus is external, what picks it up is then going to be an exteroreceptor. We can also classify receptors by their modality, i.e. what type of stimulus are they responding to. So we can have mechanoreceptors, all of our cutaneous receptors um, for our sense of touch are mechanoreceptors. Um, we also have mechanoreceptors that respond to our blood pressure um, inside our body. So mechanoreceptors can be both extero and intero. Um, thermoreceptors are going to respond to changes in temperature, right? Thermo. Um, that's kind of the neat thing about a lot of these um, kind of sensory modalities. They kind of tell you in their name what they are. Uh, for instance, photoreceptors are going to respond to light, right? Photo, light. Um, chemoreceptors tend to respond to um, different chemicals, both internally or externally. It may be something like an odorant, which you smell, or um, a particular taste. Um, could also be, um, you know, the level of carbon dioxide in the blood. Um, so chemoreceptors can be both extero and interoreceptors. Nociceptors are our pain receptors. Um, so when you're when you have a headache, when you don't, you know, when you're feeling 
that kind of pain. It is a nociceptor that is picking that up. And then we have proprioceptors, a very specific type of um, enteroreceptor that looks at um, kind of body position, really by looking at muscle and joint stretch. So how stretched um, your muscles are, how taut your tendons are, um, that gives your brain some indication of kind of how your body is positioned. So we can look and classify receptors by their location in terms of their source of the stimulus and by the various modalities, like what type of stimulus are they responding to. Um, <clears throat> now, um, some of these receptor types we're going to talk more about um, in later chapters um, because they are part of our special senses, but um, here in exercise 22, we're going to focus on um, the mechano, thermo, uh, nociceptors, and proprio receptors. Um, so we're going to talk about cutaneous receptors um, and then some internal receptors as well. Um, because this is kind of, again, more general sensation. Uh, we're gonna talk about photoreceptors when we talk about vision, for instance. So if we look at some of our cutaneous receptors um, that we find in our skin for um, some of our various kind of general senses, um, we have in the papillae of the dermis, we have these tactile or Meissner's corpuscles, which respond to kind of light touch, light pressure. Um, conversely, the lamellar or Pacinian corpuscles, which are deeper in the dermis, respond to kind of a, a stronger pressure. Wrapped around our hair follicles, our hair follicle receptors that sense when the hair moves and uh, kind of the various light touches associated with that. These bulbous corpuscles here, um, also located in the dermis, um, respond to kind of deeper pressure, kind of continuous pressure. Um, and then we have really, really simple free nerve endings, um, which are just kind of the ends of the nerves, kind of sitting out here in the skin that are going to sense um, pain and temperature. Um, so we have several different types of kind of cutaneous receptors in our skin that respond to kind of all the various levels um, of the way we respond in terms of touch. Um, if we then look at a couple of appropriate receptors, um, we can look at a tendon organ here, which senses how taut or how loose the tendon is, which could give us some indication of kind of how stretched the muscle is. But then we also have these muscle spindles here, which are located between the fibers of our skeletal muscles that sense how stretched the skeletal muscle is. You know, if it's like really stretched, that gives us um, kind of one piece of information about where our body is located versus if that muscle was kind of not stretched. Um, and so it's a very um, useful, useful thing for us to be able to kind of know how our body is positioned. Um, so the job of receptors um, is to kind of take all of this different types of stimuli and turn it into the language of our nervous system, which is action potentials and neurotransmitters. And so here we have a sensory receptor cell. When a stimulus is applied to it, it is the job of that sensory receptor cell to transduce that various type of stimulus into some sort of kind of local graded potential. Now, if that graded potential reaches a threshold value, then we get an action potential being triggered. And if we get an action potential triggered, that then leads to the release of some neurotransmitters to one of our afferent sensory neurons, which then takes the signal into the central nervous system. Um, so it is really the job of the receptors to make us aware of these various stimuli. We need the higher brain, the higher kind of levels of thought, to perceive the stimuli, to interpret it, to make sense of it. Um, and our brain does lots of different ways um, in terms of interpreting different stimuli. Perceptual detection is just our ability to say, hey, 
we have some stimulus that has been um, applied to our body. We can also look at magnitude estimation coded in the uh, frequency of our action potentials as information about how intense stimuli are, right? That's how our body says, oh, this is 70 degrees and nice and balmy as opposed to, you know, 95 degrees and it's really hot and humid. We can also do spatial discrimination, meaning we know kind of where our body is being touched and where our body is being stimulated and where it's not. Um, pattern recognition, um, your ability to recognize a song, to recognize faces, um, that's all pattern recognition. And then we have what we call quality discrimination. And quality discrimination is really about the kind of modalities within the modalities, the sub-modalities within the modality. So for instance, taste. We don't just have a sense of taste, we have uh, a sense of a salty taste, a sweet taste, a sour taste, and those are all different qualities kind of within the overall kind of taste sensation. And then if you put several sensations together, you get feature abstraction. So velvet is a really good example. If you uh, kind of run your fingers over velvet, you'll feel the texture of the velvet uh, and that kind of roughness um, in terms of the fibers, but then you can also sense how soft the velvet is. Um, or if um, you're listening to somebody speak, right, not only you can you sense how loud they are speaking, but you can sense kind of the pitch of their voice as well. So when you get a couple of different types of um, kind of stimuli um, and you put them together and kind of get like a synthesis, that is feature abstraction. Now our cutaneous receptors, our somatosensory receptors, are not evenly distributed. Um, it's called punctuated equilibrium, right? Some parts of our bodies have more sensory receptors than others. Um, so that's why we go back to the somatosensory homunculus um, in the postcentral gyrus on our um, primary somatosensory cortex in our brain, right? We have more receptors in different parts of our body, and so more receptors means more brain power to make sense of it. Um, and you guys are gonna do two different tests um, to kind of analyze um, these um, distribution, this uneven distribution. You're going to do a two-point threshold test. Um, so when does your skin feel two points as opposed to one using um, a pair of calipers? Um, and then you're going to do a tactile localization test using markers where your volunteer um, will have to try to see if they can touch the same spot that the um, classmate um, did and touched them with a, a washable marker. And then another test that you guys are going to do looks at sensory adaptation. And adaptation is basically a decrease in the responsiveness. So if you have a continual stimulus, eventually your sensory receptors be kind of become inured to it um, and the frequency of action potentials declines. Now, how fast or how slow um, different receptors adapt um, in large part depends on um, really kind of whether what we call they're called tonic or phasic. So tonic receptors adapt really slow, and so you can see it's kind of a, a gradual lessening in the frequency of action potentials, whereas phasic receptors um, adapt really rapidly. So they're really only very good at sensing when stimuli start and stop, because in the middle, they're just not responding to it at all because they're, they've become so used to it so quickly um, that they can't really sense that, hey, it's still around. Um, now it is the gnosis receptors and the purple receptors that are the slowest adapting of our receptors. And that is because um, nociceptors, of course, are sensing pain. The purple receptors are sensing muscle stretch. Um, and we do want to always be aware of pain and always be aware of our body position so that we don't end up causing ourselves more damage. Now, the sensory adaptation test that you guys are going to do in class, um, one of them is going to use some stacked coins, kind of looking at pressure 
adaptation. Um, and another one is going to look at um, adaptation of our thermal receptors. Um, so several different tests here um, in lab um, associated with our general senses.